So today we're going to look at some paranoia, psychosis, hallucinations, and delusions. Hello and welcome back to my channel, Mental Health with Melissa. If you're new here, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more content. I post new videos every single Sunday and Wednesday and subscribing to my channel really helps me get more mental health information out there to our communities of color and tons of free LCSW test prep. Um, if you have not watched my other videos yet, then um, something that I just want to make note of in the beginning of each of my videos is that I have a study program coming up soon. It should be available March 31st. It's an LCSW test prep um, informational study program and it's comprehensive and it's going to have everything that you need to know for the test including an actual mock exam and tons of LCSW test prep videos that are only available to those that purchase the program. So without further ado let's go ahead and get into the video. Um, go ahead and head down to the description box below if the test prep is sounds like something interesting to you. So today we're going to look at some paranoia, psychosis, hallucinations, and delusions. I think that sometimes these terms or these clinical assessments are used interchangeably, but there are differences and some similarities between them. And so we're going to explore what those are today. And then in the second part of this video, there's going to be a part two with a test prep question, an LCSW exam prep question for you. So let's go ahead and get into the content. Okay, so I wanted to make sure that I could have some clearly uh, written out definitions here for you. So because some people are auditory learners and some people are verbal learners, I'm sorry, um, visual learners, well, there's verbal learners too. I thought that I would go ahead and um, just kind of read this uh, to you while you read it. So um, psychosis is a mental disorder characterized by a disconnection from reality. So psychosis may occur as a result of a psychiatric illness such as schizophrenia. In other instances, it may be caused by a health condition, medications, or drug use. So with paranoia or psychosis, you may have heard, if we're talking about like this um, and here, drug-induced psychosis. So some stimulants like methamphetamine and cocaine can cause a lot of paranoia. And paranoia and psychosis are really used inter interchangeably. So paranoia can be a symptom or a sign of a psychotic disorder such as schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. Um, paranoia or paranoid delusions are fixed or false beliefs that are considered one type of psychotic symptom. So we'll get into that in a moment. So um, like I was mentioning, if you have a client that is using meth or cocaine, um, they may experience some paranoia. And again, paranoia is a symptom um, or can be a symptom of a psychosis or a psychotic disorder. And um, so having kind of that rule out is important because if they're not using drugs, then it may be an underlying mental illness, like again, schizoaffective or schizophrenia, and getting more information about the timelines and your analysis to rule out drug use or different medications is very important. So a hallucination, uh, a perception of having seen, heard, touched, tasted, or smelled something that wasn't actually there. So if you watched my video on documentation, then you know that something that is important to assess each time um, in your uh, session and to document is auditory and visual hallucinations. So an auditory hallucination is basically hearing voices that aren't actually there or hearing things that aren't actually there. And visual hallucinations are seeing things that aren't actually there. Now, like I mentioned in my documentation video, we if there uh, is concern for auditory hallucinations, we always want to assess and rule out for command hallucinations. Reason being is because somebody can have um, non-harmful hallucinations, for example, 
um, somebody may just hear people laughing at them or saying, you know, you are worthless, saying really persecute, uh, persecutory types of things. However, if it's a command hallucination, then that means that they are being told to do something by the voices. So the voices may be telling them, you need to hurt yourself or you need to pick up that knife and um, walk towards that person. And so command hallucinations are very dangerous, can be um, can be dangerous. Um, they aren't all the time, but they can be. And so we need to assess for those. And um, if there's a visual hallucination, of course, it's important to ask them what they're seeing. But um, the whole point of hallucinations is that there's some sort of uh, seeing, hearing, touching, um, or smelling something that's not actually there. Delusions are beliefs that are not real and indicate an, an abnormality in the affected person's content of thought. So, you know, all of these terminologies really come together when you watch my um, video on documentation because I talk more about that. So I want you to take a look at that video. I'll link it down in the description box below just so you can get an idea of how um, one usually assesses and documents that. So the delusions are false beliefs uh, not accounted for by the person's cultural or religious background or his or her level of intelligence. So with um, delusions, this is like an elaborate belief system um, that may not be true. An example of this um, is, um, say a client uh, tells you that there's a group of uh, people following and stalking them and um, is trying to steal their identity when that isn't the truth and there's no um, there's no evidence to prove that and you know they might even say you know they're waiting outside for me right now and then you go outside and there's nobody there but they they truly believe that this is something that's happening so that's an example of a delusion so now I want to go into detail about how all of these um, come together, the psych psychosis, paranoia, hallucinations, and delusions. So psychosis is a syndrome or group of symptoms. Someone experiencing an episode of psychosis is having a break with reality. Major symptoms of psychosis are hallucinations and delusions. Hallucinations are sensations that are not real, such as hearing voices or sounds that are not real. Hearing voices is a common hallucination, as I mentioned, but hallucinations can be experiences with any sense, like I mentioned. Delusions are strong beliefs that can't possibly be true. Common delusions include the belief that someone is following or monitoring, or the belief that you have extraordinary powers or abilities. Other symptoms of psychosis include difficulty concentrating, completing tasks, or making decisions. Thoughts may feel jumbled or confused. Some people have a hard time following conversations or speaking clearly. Psycho psychosis can even affect the way people move or express their emotions. So, psychosis kind of involves both can involve both hallucinations and delusions. So, um, some individuals may experience both at the same time, or may experience either just hallucinations or just delusions. So that's something important to keep in mind. And this may be helpful in case you uh, come across a vignette in the um, LCSW exam, or even if you aren't taking the exam, you've already passed it, or you're not planning on um, taking the exam. These are helpful tools to use when you're assessing your client and documenting, because we as clinicians should definitely have the insight about um, the differences between these terms that are sometimes used interchangeably. So thank you so much for watching. Please stay tuned for part two of this video. It is going to include an LCSW test prep question. Until next time, managing mental health matters.